like to welcome you to our time together around the Word of God today. I would like to take a moment and thank Pastor Kingsbury and Brother Burks uh, for all the hard work that they do in regards to the RU Recovery Ministry. I really appreciate their dedication, their faithfulness. And I also want to thank them for the opportunity they have given me today uh, to present the Word of God to you. I pray that our time together will be productive, that God would bless, that you would be enriched, educated in the Word of God, encouraged, and that because of this, the Lord Jesus Christ would receive all the honor and glory due his name. I would like to take you to the part of the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, and discuss with you this evening uh, the only time in the Word of God that the word addicted is used. And I want to look at that word, and I want to see the context of the verse, and talk to you tonight about the subject addicted to the ministry of the saints, as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15. Let me read the verse for us, and then we'll have a word of prayer. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would work uh, in our hearts as we look into your word today. I pray that your spirit would give us wisdom and understanding. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would strengthen all of us. And may we, by looking into your word and submitting to the Holy Spirit, May we be better equipped uh, to help others that have found themselves in bondage to sin. Help us, Father, show them the error of their way, but also the wonderful truth of the liberating gospel of Jesus Christ, for we know that only the truth makes free. So bless our time together. We pray that you would receive all the honor, glory, and praise. For once again, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We see in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, that they had addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Now, when we look at that word addicted, generally speaking, it has a negative ring to it, and so it should. Uh, addiction to drugs, alcohol, pornography, other things uh, can be devastating to an individual, uh, to family, uh, to ministry, just life in general. And so it, it's okay that it has a negative reign because of all the destruction uh, and depression that is associated with it. But I want you to think about this, that the act of addiction is not in and of itself wrong. Because we see here in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, that the children of God here, they addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So addiction is not necessarily wrong. It is the object of your addiction that is the problem. It's just like uh, in regards to the word covet. Uh, coveting by itself isn't wrong. It's the object of the coveting that makes it wrong. If you're coveting money, if you're coveting power, possessions, prestige, uh, those that coveting is wrong. But Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31 tells us to covet. He says, but covet earnestly, the best gifts. And so again, coveting is not in and of itself wrong or sinful. It's the object of what you are coveting. If we are coveting the things of the world, 
If we are coveting ungodly things, it is sin, it is wrong. But if we are coveting the best gifts, if we are coveting God, if we are coveting a walk with God, if we are coveting a spirit-controlled life, then it's okay. Uh, and it is encouraged that we covet those things. And the same goes uh, with coveting as it does with the act of addiction. It's not necessarily the addiction, it's what we are addicted to. And instead of being addicted uh, to the world, uh, uh, the drugs, the alcohol, the pornography, the other destructive behaviors that are out there that an individual can find themselves addicted to, may we, uh, like the individuals here in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, find ourselves addicted to the ministry of the saints. Now, we always ask, what is addiction? I believe addiction is, uh, starts in the spiritual realm of an individual's life where we make a bad choice and that bad choice is followed by another bad choice, followed by another bad choice, followed by that same bad choice over and over again. It becomes a habit. It becomes a stronghold. Uh, we become in bondage to that uh, activity, that drug, that alcohol, that behavior, uh, and it has consequences associated with it. It's destructive. It's depressing. In many ways, it uh, degrades a person's life. And really, when you think of it, addiction, when you boil it down, it, it's a heart issue. It starts in the spirit, as I already said, but it quickly engulfs the psychological and physical aspect of an individual. That's why as we minister to these people, yes, we need to focus in on the spiritual, but we also need to help them heal psychologically and physically because the addiction has engulfed the entire person. But again, our focus, the essential, is on the spiritual. Addiction... Um, there is a preoccupation with whatever you're addicted to. Uh, not only a preoccupation with, but it permeates your entire life. And the individual is passionate about their addiction. It's what they go to bed thinking about. And it's the first thought that they have in the morning. And throughout the whole day, it drives them. Uh, it impacts their life. Addiction is where you lose control over to something else. It's where, uh, in essence, you cannot quit. And with addiction, as I've already made mention, comes certain consequences, which can be spiritual, psychological, as well as physical. Now, many today are addicted to drugs. And we know that here in the United States, uh, there is uh, uh, an issue going on uh, with opiates. Uh, there is a big issue with prescription opiates or narcotics or pain medication and speaking in general uh, that I know you're dealing with, that I'm dealing with in my medical practice and in my biblical counseling uh, at the ministry I'm involved in. Uh, There's so many people that are finding themselves addicted to drugs, but also, uh, as we know from the Bible, uh, this dates back to Bible times. People were addicted to alcohol, uh, which again is just really another drug. It's a chemical. Uh, but I also want to mention, because some people think, well, I don't have an addiction problem to drugs. I don't have an addiction problem to alcohol. Therefore, I don't have to worry about addiction. It's not a part of my life. Uh, but we need to educate people that they can be addicted to other destructive behaviors and thought processes and one of those is pornography. Pornography stimulates part of the neurotransmitters in our brain and gives uh, those that have issues with that a euphoric feeling. So people not only are addicted to drugs and alcohol but to pornography. I believe others are addicted. Uh, they've lost control. They can't quit uh, in regards to anger or bitterness or even criticism, uh, or always critiquing others, or a negativism, 
Uh, it's always looking at the, uh, the negative side, not the positive side. I think, especially as I look at the current generation, I think some are even addicted to their laziness. Uh, it preoccupies their life. It permeates their life. And they're passionate about their laziness. Also, along with laziness, I, I believe people can be addicted uh, to indifference or and who cares attitude. Uh, well, I'm saved and my family's saved and, and too bad if, if, if the other people go uh, uh, without knowing Christ and end up in an eternal hell. Who cares? They're just indifferent uh, in regards to uh, following the Great Commission that God gave the church to go out and spread the gospel and see people saved and baptized and discipled. And so they're, they're indifferent. They have a who cares attitude. And, and some saved people are even addicted to unfaithfulness. They're not faithful to services. They're not faithful to Bible reading. They're not faithful to prayer. They're not faithful to their spouse. They're not faithful to their family. In fact, they're not even faithful to their, their job. Uh, and people have become addicted to unfaithfulness. And, and then lastly, I, I really believe people can become addicted to a self-righteousness uh, thought philosophy in their life where they are better than others. Uh, they don't need uh, any help. They need no counseling. Uh, in, in fact, if you ask them down deep in their soul, they're pretty good. And, and, and at times they may even think, I'm not certain I need God at this moment. And they're addicted to this self-righteousness. So I want to expand the definition of addiction, not only to drugs and alcohol, which again, most people would agree about, but to these other elements, these other behaviors that uh, people are passionate about, that permeate their life, that preoccupy their thought process. And these thought processes, these behaviors are, are destructive. Uh, they have significant consequences spiritually, psychologically, uh, and, um, and physically. And so we need, obviously, to shun these addictions. Uh, we need to help others shun, get away from these addictions. But what we need to be addicted to, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, is the ministry of the saints. And so what we have as a wonderful privilege, these people that come to us for help, that are addicted to drugs, alcohol, other destructive behaviors and thought processes, we can take that passion they had for the drugs, uh, we can take that preoccupation that they had with the drugs, alcohol, whatever it might be, and we can take that passion and that preoccupation and channel it towards the Lord Jesus Christ. We can counsel them, help them, channel that passion, that preoccupation into an addiction, but that addiction is not to the world or the devil or all that goes on in the world, but channel those addictive behaviors into the ministry of the saints, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, and see these individuals, instead of having a destructive lifestyle, have a lifestyle dependent upon God that glorifies God and that will build them up in the Lord Jesus Christ because all of us need to let go and let God have control of our lives. Uh, there's a saying that uh, I heard many, many years ago, even when I was a much younger man, uh, that God is our co-pilot. My friends, God is not our co-pilot. And if you have that philosophy that God is your co-pilot, uh, that's a major part of your problem. God is the pilot, and we're the passenger, and we need to go where God wants to take us, how God wants to take us, and when God wants to take us, because God uh, doesn't take orders or give suggestions. He tells us exactly what we should think, what we should say, and what we should do, and we as submissive children, addicted uh, to the ministry of the saints, addicted to God, addicted to the word of God, should follow and obey. Uh, too many are addicted to their physical and emotional cravings 
instead of being addicted to their spiritual calling. We need to get away from our physical and emotional cravings and prioritize in our life the spiritual calling that we have received of our God. And so I want to outline just a little bit in my time remaining what is the ministry of the saints? What are we to be addicted to according to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, verse 15? And the first one is the study of Scripture. The study of Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 tells us to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are to dig into the word of God. Uh, we are to read the word of God passionately. Uh, the word of God should preoccupy our mind. And again, we should be passionate about not only reading the word of God, but uh, studying the scriptures and memorizing the Bible and then meditating on what we have read and studied that day so that it can permeate our life. It can penetrate our our soul and spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can guide us into all truth. It talks about the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, where it says that they searched the scriptures daily. I believe as a child of God, we all should be addicted uh, to the word of God. We should be addicted to the study of the scriptures, and it should be on a daily basis, according to Acts chapter 17, verse 11, the Word of God should preoccupy our mind. We should let the Bible, the Word of God, the Scriptures permeate our life, and we should be passionate about the Bible. That's one of the things I believe that we should be addicted to, addicted to the ministry of the saints, that a part of our addiction is to the study of the Scripture. We need to have through this study of the scripture, through this desire and passion for the scripture, it will help facilitate in our lives a personal and powerful relationship with God. Because it, we generally don't trust someone we don't know. And the more we know God, the more we know his son Jesus Christ, uh, the, the more able we're going to be by faith to trust him. And so we get to know God by the scriptures. We get to know his son, Jesus Christ, through the scriptures. And so we need not only for ourselves, but those we're working with, is to channel the addiction into the word of God, into a personal and powerful relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Secondly, I believe the addiction to the ministry of the saints is in regards to support. Not only the study of the scripture, but support. It tells us in Hebrews 3, 13, but exhort, encourage, build up, lift up, exhort one another daily. This is something that should again preoccupy our lives that we desire on a daily basis uh, to exhort, encourage, build up, lift up other believers uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something that just is part of who we are, and we're passionate about it. I think about it. Think of uh, uh, those that uh, have pa a pastor in their life. Uh, build them up. Give them a text. Write them out a note and encourage them. Uh, they spend hours preparing for their messages and lessons uh, let them know you appreciate the time uh, that they put into those messages and the prayer that are, uh, go into those messages. Support your pastor. Exhort them. Encourage them. Build them up. Lift them up. Yes, pray for them without a doubt, but let them know you're praying for them. Uh, let them know you love them, that you're there for them and encourage. And not only that, but I think about it, exhort, encourage build up, lift up your parents, uh, the spiritual leadership that is in uh, your family uh, uh, or in your life, uh, encourage, build up, 
exhort, lift up your family members. If, if God's blessed you with a spouse, build them up, encourage them on a daily basis. Uh, share with them, oh, how I appreciate uh, seeing you read the Bible every day. I appreciate your prayer life. I appreciate your standards. I appreciate your love. I appreciate your faithfulness. There's so many things that we can say or write down to encourage our family members, our spouse, and even godly friends that we have that God has brought into our life. Uh, encourage them. Oh, you're doing a great job. It's good to see you at church. Uh, appreciate your friendship. Appreciate your faithfulness. It doesn't have to be long and exhaustive. It can be something uh, quite simple and short. But those short, simple statements, whether verbal or, uh, or written, uh, uh, can go a long way in helping the other person as they feel your exhortation as they feel your encouragement. And so addicted to the ministry of the saints, not only, number one, to the study of the scriptures, and secondly, to support each other, that we would be addicted to those things, that uh, it would uh, preoccupy us, it would permeate our lives, we'd be passionate about it. But third is service. It says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, talking about Jesus Christ himself, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and here it is, who went about doing good. Psalm 34, 14 says, depart from evil and do good. Psalm 37, verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. When is the last time that you did good for someone, whether lost or saved, just did a good deed to help someone else? Do a good deed without the thought of reciprocity, that I'm doing this good deed to show the love of God. I don't need anything in return. I don't need any recognition. I don't need any reciprocity. I don't need anything good done back to me. I am simply doing good towards another person so that I can show that other person the love of God that I have in my life. The lost person can see the love of God, which then may open the door to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them and see them saved. You do good to another believer in Christ, they see the love of God, they see the grace of God, the mercy of God, and it should stimulate them to do good because they know the benefit of being on the receptive side of someone doing good to them. And that would, could encourage them to then do good uh, to someone else. And so study the scripture. Be addicted to studying the scripture. Allow it to uh, preoccupy you. Allow it uh, to permeate your life and be passionate about it. But not only the study of the scripture, uh, but supporting each other, encouraging, exhorting one another, and doing service to others. Just doing good regardless of it, if anybody notices you or not, do good, uh, whether you receive recognition or not. God is aware and God can bless like no one else can bless. God can do uh, so many amazing things as we are obedient uh, to the word of God. Because like it says in Psalm 34, 14, depart from evil, uh, most of us work at that. But then it, it doesn't stop there. Then it says, and do good. Uh, uh, Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord. We work at that. But it's not the end of the sentence. It says, and do good. We need to depart from evil. Yes, we need to trust uh, in the Lord. But we also, as these verses tell us, we need to do good. And so allow that to preoccupy, preoccupy you and permeate your life and be passionate. Look for opportunities to do good to help other people. Number four, in regards to addiction uh, to the ministry of the saints, uh, really uh, a part of our lives, a part of our heartbeat is soul winning, is going after the lost. Proverbs 11 verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. 
but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus has come into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. It was the desire of Jesus Christ. It was his passion. It preoccupied his his mind, his life, uh, it permeated his life, his ministry was to reach out to the lost and see them accept him as the Messiah, the Son of God, uh, the Christ, uh, so that they may have eternal life in him. And my friends, we need to allow this to preoccupy our lives, to uh, permeate our lives and be passionate uh, going out there with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, verbally uh, telling others as the Holy Spirit gives us opportunity about the liberating gospel of Jesus Christ and how the truth and the truth is Jesus, the truth is his word, how the truth can make free. We need to be expounding that to uh, all that God gives us the opportunity to verbally communicate. But my friends, hand out tracts. Uh, uh, we have in our front yard a sign uh, that says Jesus saves, John 3, 16, to try to stimulate others that might drive by. What, what is this about Jesus saves? They might look up John 3, 16. They might stop by and ask us, but at least get into their mind uh, that uh, there is eternity and that Jesus Christ is the answer in regards to eternity. Uh, we also love, uh, my, my wife especially, to go to uh, a store and put tracks in boxes, put tracks in uh, the uh, pockets of uh, pants, uh, put tracks in uh, uh, purses that are not sold, obviously. Uh, they're still on the table to be sold. So that when someone buys whatever it is in that box, when someone buys that purse, when someone buys that pair of pants, uh, or that dress that has a pocket, and they put their hand in the pocket, uh, when they put their hand or look in the purse, or when they open up that box, they find a gospel track, because the gospel is what people need, uh, the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and just try to uh, find other ways to get the gospel message out. I can't change anybody. I can't save anybody, but the gospel can. The gospel can save and change lives. And so we need uh, to be addicted to the ministry of the saints, addicted to soul winning. You think about it medically, uh, as I treat people, if someone were to come to me with a medical issue and I diagnose them with a disease process and I knew uh, the treatment uh, for that disease process, uh, and said nothing, just said, yes, you have uh, this disease. I'm diagnosing you with it. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Uh, goodbye. Uh, that person could turn around uh, and sue me uh, because I did not render the treatment I knew about. That would be medical negligence. I'm afraid there are too many Christians that are spiritually negligent. We've diagnosed the problem the Word of God has. It's a sin problem. But we as Christians know the Word of God not only diagnoses the sin problem, but it gives us the treatment for the sin problem, and that is uh, repentance towards God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And we know what people are suffering from. We know the disease that they have, which is sin, but we recognize that, and then we walk out the door. It's spiritual negligence. We need, as again, God gives us opportunity, as God's grace and mercy through his spirit leads us, give out the treatment, give out the cure, uh, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so may soul winning, soul consciousness, be a part of our life and a, a part of our addiction to the ministry of the saints, not only addicted 
to the study of the scriptures, not only addicted to supporting each other, encouraging each other, exhorting each other, building each other up, addicted to service, just doing good because that's what God wants us to do. And through doing good, God then can, through his spirit, open doors for us to minister to the lost and minister to other saved individuals and addicted to soul winning. And number five, and lastly, addicted to the ministry of the saints, I believe deals with our sanctification. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. James chapter 1, verse 27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and here it is, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. We need to be addicted to the sanctification process, that daily, moment by moment, we're submitting to the Holy Spirit of God. We're submitting to the Word of God. We're submitting to the Spirit of God as, as He leads us in the Word of God to make us more like Jesus Christ, that we put off, as Paul said, as we put off the old man and we put on the new man. Uh, that on a daily basis, we are allowing this to preoccupy our life, to permeate our life, that we're passionate about it, that today I decide, I'm passionate about it, that I am going to live my life uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ through the empowerment and leadership of the Holy Spirit. I submit today, I submit moment by moment to the Holy Spirit. Help me, dear God, to walk in your spirit that I may not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I want people to see Christ in me today and be addicted to that, the sanctification process. I pray that the study of the scriptures, supporting each other, servicing each other with good works, soul winning and sanctification would preoccupy our lives, that it would permeate our existence, that we would be passionate about these things, that we would lose our control of our life and allow God through His Spirit to have control of our lives. Uh, may it be these things that I've mentioned in regards to addicted to the ministry of the saints that we're not able to quit them. Uh, no matter how difficult the road uh, that may lie ahead for us, I can't stop loving and being in the Bible. I can't stop encouraging or supporting others. I can't stop servicing others with good works. I can't stop sharing the gospel and soul winning, and I can't stop the sanctification process. I just can't stop it. I want it. I'm passionate about it. It preoccupies my mind. It permeates my life. I just have to have it. No matter how difficult the road may be uh, that we have to walk, uh, the rest of our lives. Uh, I just have to have these things. They are just a part of who I am. And doing these things, uh, there may be consequences associated with these activities. The devil doesn't like it. And uh, people can come into our lives, circumstances can come into our lives, uh, that will try to dissuade us away from being addicted to the ministry of the saints. Uh, but <clears throat> good or bad, that may end up in our life. May we bear the reproach of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to do these things because I know it glorifies my Heavenly Father. You see, addiction is a choice. It says they addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Addiction is a choice. And not only is it a choice that we individually make, but addiction is contagious. It says they addicted themselves. That's plural. They addicted themselves. 
And so we make a personal choice on what we are going to be addicted to. But as we choose God, as we choose Jesus Christ, as we choose the Holy Spirit, as we choose the Word of God and become addicted to the ministry of the saints, that choice that we make as an individual can influence others to make that same choice. You see, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and here it is, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. I pray that you will find yourself addicted to the ministry of the saints, that it preoccupies you, it permeates your life, and you're passionate about it. And making that choice to be addicted to the ministry of the saints, I believe will help others make that same choice because it is contagious. Addicted to the ministry of the saints. I want my whole life, my thoughts, my words, my actions to be all about Jesus Christ, to glorify him. So I ask you this evening as we minister in the RU Recovery Program to those that find themselves in bondage, they find themselves addicted to drugs, alcohol, pornography, anger, bitterness, indifference, laziness, unfaithfulness, self-righteousness, that will help them turn their addiction from these ungodly, destructive roads to the addiction of the ministry of the saints and see them pour their life into the Lord Jesus Christ and see their life glorify God Almighty. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that your word will work in all hearts, that you would draw us closer to you Help each one of us make a decision right now that I am going to be addicted to the ministry of the saints. And Father, help that decision that we make individually affect others to make the same choice. So Father, thank you for our time together this evening. I thank you for the RU Recovery Program. I pray that you would bless and favor it. Be with Pastor Kingsbury. And Brother Burks, give them wisdom to continue to lead this ministry. I so, I'm so thankful for their friendship and their faithfulness. Bless the rest of our day. May you be glorified in our lives. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. God bless you and your ministry.